My name is Sholin Cham, and I'm a senior solution consultant at ServiceNow with a specialization in strategic portfolio management. In this video, I am going to give you a brief overview of the new functionalities of capacity planning and resource management in the latest Vancouver release of the ServiceNow platform. This presentation may contain forward-looking statements that reflect the current beliefs of ServiceNow and are based on information currently available to us as of the date of this presentation. This forward-looking statement should not be relied upon for making purchasing decisions. First, let's talk about capacity planning. Now, what's new in our Vancouver release is that we now have the ability to do capacity planning in the portfolio planning workspace or the strategic planning workspace. You'll see on this slide that capacity planning is now included in both the standard and pro versions of our planning workspace, with the pro version giving you the ability to do capacity planning across more work items, including epics and agile epics, while the standard version lets you do capacity planning across projects and demands. Capacity planning is a new module, and it's how organizations determine if there are enough resources to complete the planned work, estimate the supply and demand of resources, and foresee risks related to resource constraints and gaps. It can also inform workforce planning based on future resource needs. In short, capacity planning is how organizations answer the question, do we have the right number of the right type of people for the work that we have planned? Capacity planning enables project managers, product managers, and volume managers to determine if there is enough of the right type of resources available to do the work that has been planned, regardless of work type or methodology, and determine what type of action needs to be taken to resolve conflicts before they arise. To estimate the effort required to complete a planning item, users can now make resource assignments for planning items within strategic planning workspace or portfolio planning workspace. Resource assignments that are made to demands or projects within the project workspace will also be carried over to the planning workspace. Finally, resource assignments can be assigned to a user, group, role, or skill. Efforts can be estimated in terms of FTE, hours, or person days. And for pro users, effort estimates can also be made directly on agile entities like Safe Epics. Now, let's jump into a quick demo of our capacity planning feature. You'll see here that we are in our strategic planning workspace. And in order to determine the supply of available resources to do the work, users can click on the Manage Resource Capacity icon on the left-hand side menu and generate capacity planning tables for it to find a defined workforce for a specific period of time. So this report here shows us the number of workers in terms of FTE that meet the filter criteria in this time frame. Prior to this step, there should be employee profiles created for all resources with their relevant attributes like skills and roles assigned. This is a required step for capacity planning on a portfolio. Next, portfolio managers can determine the relevant criteria that resources need to complete the work in a portfolio. They can first define the criteria by group, role, or skill, and then select all of the relevant fields that are related to the criteria that was previously selected here. This reduces confusion by filtering out irrelevant resources and also allows you to include resources from other groups or departments. Now, here is what capacity planning in a portfolio looks like. In the top section, you can see the resources that are available to do the work based on the criteria that you defined earlier. And in the lower section, you can see all of the planning items that have been included in this portfolio, as well as the work type that they are. At the top right, the heat map shows us where resources have been over allocated. A blue cell will indicate unassigned resources. And in the lower tray, you can drag and drop planning items to change the date or the duration of a work item. Now, if you click on a planning item in the lower tray, it will highlight the resources that have been assigned to do that particular uh, work item. Now, if we click on a resource here, so let's say I'm going to pick the data scientist role. And if I click on the drop down arrow next to this resource, I can see all of the planning items that have been assigned to this particular role, including the type of work items that they are here. 
clicking into a particular month um, corresponding to that particular role will provide more details as to why this data scientist role has been overutilized in the month of July, for example. Now, this brings us to the end of our capacity planning demo. Now, let's take a look at resource management. There is now a new next experience for resource management within the project workspace with a new look and feel. But it is also a total rebuild of the project workspace to make it easy to use with all new functionality. The new project workspace now leverages a self-teaching next-gen UI consistent across the platform to increase productivity. It also unifies data to be natively compatible with all work planning and delivery approaches. The important thing to point out with this update is that the classic or legacy resource management experience uses the resource plan table, while the new resource workspace uses the resource assignment table. This new table has more functionality and the resource assignments table is also the basis for attribute-based financial planning and capacity planning. The other notable difference with this new table is that resource assignments can be now made at any work breakdown structure level. And these resource assignments can be fine-tuned throughout a project. So for example, you could first assign work to a group and a role, and then later on in the project, assign that work item to an individual. The enhancement to resource management help project managers and resource managers respond to resourcing needs and conflicts proactively and with less work before they impact project delivery. One example is that the allocation heat map has been enhanced for better conflict resolution. So now when you click into a week, you can see what other work that resource is assigned to do, whether it's a project, epic, demand, or operational work. And you can see the owners of other tasks so that you can reach out to them to resolve conflicts. And if the team's integration is enabled, you can click on that task owner's name and directly reach out to them to resolve the issue. Now, some organizations may only want resource managers to have access to named resources. Now, it's possible to configure ACLs to make assigning resources read-only for groups like project managers. The project managers will still be able to assign groups, roles, or skills to a task, but not to specific users. You can see in this screenshot here that the resource name field is blank with only the ability to select a role type or a skill type. Another new feature is that now when tasks are created, there's an easy way to sync up resource assignments. After tasks are moved, the icon at the top will say resources not synced and clicking on that icon will sync all the resource assignment dates to the project task dates. You can also sync them one at a time by clicking realign assignments to task, or if you use the move project action to change project start dates, the resources will automatically be synced. Any resources that had been previously approved before the change will now go back to pending when the dates change. Resources on demands also now migrate. Many customers assign resources first to demands. All those resource assignments will be converted over to a project when the demand is converted to a project. They are assigned at the project level, so you have to toggle on the display summary task to see resource assignments. Note that you will also be able to see resource assignments on demands in the allocation heat map model, even before demands become projects. Finally, the last enhancement is that now if you assign a task to an attribute, a group, role, or skill, and then assign a user to that task who doesn't match an attribute and remove them, the task will still be assigned to the originally requested attribute. The attributes of the user assigned to the task don't overwrite the attributes originally requested. To wrap up, we do want to acknowledge that the functionality for Next Experience Resource Management is being rolled out over several releases, and not all organizations may be ready to switch to the Next Experience in Vancouver, based on the current functionality. Use this slide as a starting point to determine if your organization is ready to make the switch. This brings us to the end of our release video. Thank you for your attention today.